and longevity. Now, why do we want to think a fighting system for health and longevity? Let's say you're about to catch a cold, right? How can you fight a cold? Does that make sense to you? How can you fight a cold? You have to take some medicine, you have to take a kinetza, or you can think of many, many different herbs, vitamin C, or can you have your body fight the cold, right? So with this training, we teach the body to be able to expand the energy, for example. So what is happening when the body is expanding the energy? We have the mind, the body, and energy are one. Three is one, so the mental, the energetic, and the physical, we want to train them together as one unit so the body listens to the energy, <coughs> the energy listens to the mind. If I'm talking too fast, just let me know. Or if you got any questions, if I confuse you with too much information, just uh, let me know. Yeah. What, what's the difference between uh, Tai Chi and Qi Gong? Tai Chi has a specific form, they have a very specific form, and it is taught as a martial arts as well. This Qigong system, I'll explain, is actually different than many other Qigong systems. So I'll explain specifically about this system. Like I said, there's many, many other systems. But Tai Chi, you've seen it maybe in movies. I've seen some practitioner where they do certain movement to move, to move the Qi, which is a very good question. In Tai Chi, it's more about moving the Qi. In this Qigong, what we want to do is we want to build the container of Qi, right? So. I went to get water from the dispenser, and I'm actually looking for the hot water, I like to drink hot water, and they had plastic cups. Luckily, when I used the red um, handle, the hot water didn't come out. What would happen if we pour very hot water into a plastic cup? It would melt, right? So this is, in a way, what we want to do to our bodies, we want to change the container from plastic cup to ceramic cup, right? Or something stronger that is able to hold higher level of vibration, okay? So in this training, we train the physical, we train the energy, and we train the mental, and we have a big focus on the physical, changing the container. Silicon Valley, right? We can use those terminology, we can think of changing the hardware, okay? In the beginning, we're not so interested in the software, we're more interested in changing the hardware, so you can run different softwares in the future, same thing. For your body, if your body is very healthy, less affected by stress, you can do a lot more things. So, how do we do this training? I'll give you an example. How do you make a tree stronger? Okay, One way to make a tree stronger, since it's very young, if it's not exposed to wind, what's going to happen to the tree? It's going to grow very tall, and then it's going to fall, because the roots are not very strong, because it had no stress. Right? So if you want a tree to be stronger, you can actually move the tree a little bit, even shake it a little bit, create stronger root, make it stronger. That's exactly what the wind is doing to the trees. It's making them stronger, making the roots stronger. It's exactly what we're doing in Golden Shield Qigong. We're applying wind to the body. Okay? There's many ways to apply wind to the body, and you'll see some of these ways today. Hopefully they're not too shocking if they are. Let me know. And they're not shocking. They might be shocking, but it's just a, the way to show you the, the human potential. So one way to apply wind to the body is just, for example, tapping the abdomen, right? So it's not a very strong tap, right? So it's not a very strong wind. So this is just very comfortable, moving the energy, circulating the energy around. And we do it in the abdomen. So the first level of our Qigong focuses on the abdomen level. It's actually an eight month program on average. where we strengthen the abdomen by applying wind. And once we apply wind to the abdomen, all of a sudden that wind is not really strengthening anymore. What happened? The body got used to that kind of challenge, right? So we have to increase the challenge. And then we get a little bit stronger challenge so the body gets stronger. Rule number one, you have to enjoy what you're doing. You can't just be like, oh, I gotta get stronger, stronger. This is not the way to do it. What happens when you're not enjoying it, your energy will shut down. It will not expand. You want the energy to expand, you want the meridian to expand. So after we apply the little bit of wind, we can start 
apply more wind, right? And we don't do this one on day one, right? We take a little bit time to develop and then we can apply more wind or more challenge to the body. And after you do this for a few weeks, all of a sudden, it's not so challenging anymore. All of a sudden, the hand might start hurting, right? So the abdomen gets stronger and the hand is hurting. So then we need to increase the stimulation, right? And then we can even go a little stronger, okay? And you might think I'm hitting my abdomen. I'm actually not hitting my abdomen. Although it looks like it, I'm not hitting my abdomen. There's a little secret to the system, okay, that you learn in class. So it seems a certain way, but it's the opposite of that. And so forth, the system grows. The abdomen gets stronger. The energetic system of the whole body gets stronger. We like to say the meridians are enlarging, right? Because we're asking them to bring forth more energy, right? So energy can come out at will, which means it's an energetic practice as well. But we have to have a mental image, a mental thought, to tell the energy to come out, right? Energy come out, protect the body, right? Why would you want the energy to protect the body? For example, if you catch a cold, right? In Western medicine, you think you catch a cold from somebody through the mouth or through the nose. In Chinese medicine, we believe you catch a cold from the upper back. I don't know if you noticed that wearing a scarf in the winter will prevent, will help you prevent catching a cold, right? So if you know how to control the energy here, if you're sensitive enough to tell you're catching a cold and not three late days later when you're already sore throat and sick with sinuses, early enough, if you have the sensitivity, you can actually have your energy come out and protect you against the pathogen or the cold. Right? That means your whole energy system is stronger, able to withstand the stress much, much better. So this is just an example, but we start in the abdomen, strengthening the digestive organ. We call it the spleen and the liver, or the digestive organ in Chinese medicine. <coughs> Any questions so far? It's pretty clear? Not many questions, but well, I'm just I'm waiting. <laughs> I'm just going to let you keep talking. Okay. <laughs> okay, good. So. As I said, the stimulation keep growing and growing and growing and developing until we can have maybe an airbag, right? What's an airbag? An airbag is sitting behind your wheel, all crunched up, just waiting to deploy, right? So we train this airbag. Come out, come out, come out, protect, 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 or just come out. We don't really need any protection because we're in class, we're training, or at home, we're training. We're teaching the energy to come up, but we want it to stay just like an airbag. You don't want to drive around with an airbag in front of your face, right? That wouldn't be very good. You'd just get into an accident. After a class about, I think it was maybe five years ago, I was in Austin, Texas. I was driving home in rural Texas, back home after Qigong class. I had a small car and a big deer, a buck, had them. I think three, four points maybe more, it was pretty big, it was right in front of my car. And I was going maybe 50 miles per hour. And I didn't have enough time to brake, and I just hit the deer head on. I was holding on to the wheel, and the only thing, thing I could think of is I don't want this deer on my windshield. I really, that's the only thing I thought about. I don't want it on my windshield, because that's not going to be very good. What happened was I felt, as I was sitting, my body to, like that. My whole body, just one unit, and I could feel the energy, like an airbag, come out of my body. The deer ended up on the side of the road. The car, the front was completely total. The windshield wasn't hit or anything. The interesting thing for him was just the car airbag did not deploy. He was a very strong impact, 50 miles per hour hitting the big deer. I don't know why the airbag didn't deploy. <laughs> I should call the car out and ask them. But luckily, I could feel my energy come out. And that was a very strong sensation of energy coming out. I felt tired the next day. What I did is I drove to the exact location of the accident. It was a few miles from my house. I had another car, the rental car, I think it was. And I went to the accident, and I called my energy back to me, right? Because what happened after a trauma, a lot of